Hi everybody. We've all heard of George Washington, right? But have you heard of George Washington? A place, a little town called George in the state of Washington. This is a gravel pit and I normally give you a nice vista and a backdrop and everything, but this is a gravel pit. There's garbage and it's, it's not a pleasant place to be. However, I've heard enough about this site here that I want to share it with you because I've been thinking and learning new things about the Ice Age floods. And there's a story here that we want to look at carefully today. Let's flip you around. Okay, I mean, abandoned gravel pit. I don't know who owns it. Uh, gate was open. Just help myself to this place. Hope nobody minds if they see this. And yeah, we got two by fours and uh, box springs and everything. But if I stay wide for you here, this is Calcrete. And I have a newfound respect for Calcrete after hearing Sky Cooley's talk at Central Washington University last weekend, last Friday. And we know that Calcrete now is a stable, quiet surface that represents hundreds of thousands of years. Old soil horizon, okay, fine. But the interesting thing is what's below the Calcrete. And I'm not gonna spend much time here but I want to poke through a few of these cobbles, give you a sense of this deposit, and then read to you just a little bit from an old field guide I have from Carl Loquist, who's a, a good friend and, and fellow professor at Central Washington University. So, yeah, oh man, it stinks. There's a rocking, rot, rotting carcass in here someplace. All right, let's hold our breath. So these cobbles look to be mostly basaltic. There are some bigger boys in here. Uh, I think we go up to five meters, no, we go up to five feet in diameter for the biggest of the cobbles here. And this is a rather healthy accumulation of stones in a layer underneath the calcrete. Okay, let's cut to it. If this is a surface that represents hundreds of thousands of years, and if paleomag analysis have been done on the sediment horizon just beneath the calcrete and apparently it's been done at other locations in eastern Washington maybe not here and if that paleomeg shows reversed polarity meaning that these sands were deposited older than 780,000 years ago that means that these basaltic boulders and cobbles were deposited here were dumped here uh, maybe a million years ago, or maybe even older, earlier in the Ice Age, in other words. You know what I'm getting at. This is one of the key early Ice Age flood deposits that sits below a calcrete and is therefore representing a much, much, much older Ice Age flood that came from someplace, let's say a million years ago, just for fun. Okay, so I'm not even, well, I, I got a hammer. I'll, I'll break a couple open that are just happened to be right down here, okay? So do we want to look at these guys? Let me, let me, get, let me be true here. We'll, we'll get that one right there. And it, what didn't take much effort to break this basalt cobble open, there's kind of a rusty look to it. Maybe this weathering rind, which is, in other words, these don't look like fresh uh, cobbles. And you're like, I don't know, tell, you, you tell me what you want. Are these really not fresh? Uh, I don't know. Except to say that this deposit, just at first glance, does not look like it was deposited in here 15,000 years ago, as I've seen with other more fresh Ice Age flood deposits. Okay, so where are we? This is from, you can search, you can Google this and find it, I'll bet. If you Google Western Quincy Basin Field Trip, Ice Age Floods Institute, Carl Loquist, uh, he did that trip in the spring of 2017. And I remember being impressed. That was my only other time here. So where are we? 
I'm working one-handed here. We're just south of Potholes Coulee in Quincy Lakes. The little town of George on Google Maps is right there. And we're at the number two. I hesitate telling you all to come out here because I don't know who owns the land, but I'm here. And I want to read to you one little passage from this. This is Carl Oquist doing some research to prepare for the field trip. In the walls of the pit here, we're looking at gravel deposits from an ice age flood. And they're sub-rounded, poorly sorted, poorly bedded. There's four set bedding that dip to the south. Mostly basalt in composition. Some of the boulders up to five and a half feet. That was described by Bretz and George Neff back in 1956. Apparently George Neff is the guy that found this site and understood its significance. Yeah, J. Harlan Bretz himself. Crystalline rocks, in other words, kind of white salt and pepper granites and metamorphic rocks are also scattered about in these deposits, telling us that the floods came from well to the north or northeast. I just mentioned the calcrete. Here's the main message. Several characteristics of these granites are odd in comparison to most other Ice Age flood deposits uh, nearby. Caliche sits on top of the flood gravels. The basalts have a deep weathering rind. There's chunks of vantage sandstone nearby within this deposit, and the flood that deposited them are much older than the late Pleistocene. An earlier Pleistocene origin is also supported by the presence of deeply weathered basaltic cobbles to a depth of five feet. There are similarities from this outcrop to a place at the Old Maid Coulee in the southeast. And that's where Bruce Bjornstad and others documented this earlier than 780,000 year old age because of the reverse paleomag. This is the oldest of two old flood deposits identified by George Neff in the Quincy Basin. Turn the page. Turn the page, boy. Given a flood source moving from east to west across the Quincy Basin, we would expect the dip to be down to the east. Instead, the dip is towards the east, southeast, and south here, suggesting that the flood flows came from the Columbia River Valley via the Potholes Coulee Cataract. These boulders could only have come from outcrops along the Babcock Bench, which is six miles to the west. Okay, I'm flipping you around for a final comment. All right, I, I mean, I'm on my way to Wenatchee. I'm going to hike with my Geology 351 students in about an hour over at Saddle Rock. And I don't know, I might bring them here uh, uh, a week from now, two weeks from now, not sure. But in class, we are getting more and more interested in these old Ice Age flood deposits. To me, maybe I'm just missing the boat, but to me, there are Ice Age flood scientific paper after Ice Age flood scientific paper focusing on recent flooding, in other words, younger than 20,000 years ago. And it feels like most of these books and manuscripts and papers and road guides and field guides, most of them just kind of toss in a paragraph here or there saying, remember now, there's older floods. There's much older floods, but we don't know much about them. Well, there's enough of those little hints here and there. Old moraines, old flood deposits. I mean, how old is old? Are we truly going back a million years ago? or even two million years ago. What do we know about those scattered outcrops? Can we say anything meaningful? That's really the theme, the emerging theme this spring with my Geology 351 folks. So yes, most of the attention has been given to places that have younger than 20,000 year dates, but these <laughs> not very sexy locations possibly have some spice to them if a narrative can be built around them. And we'll give it the old college try in the next few months. Thanks.